Welcome to Checks and Balances. I'm Michael Vincent. This is James Blair. And this week, what happens after the world falls apart and the stock market crashes? So, 2022. Mike, how would you sum up this year? We're right at the back end of the year. How do you reckon it's been? Um, you know, I would say it's a roller coaster, but there hasn't been a lot of ups if no. you're looking at the stock market. No, you know. <laughs> similar to the stash, patchy. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Strongest mustache in the game. Shaved head, Mike, coming soon as well. Yeah. Looking forward to it during summertime. So the share market. I tell clients every time I bring on a new client, we're talking about an investment client, share market goes through seven, seven year cycle. We've got yep. three good years, three kind of boring years, one bad year. We haven't had a bad year since 2008, and we're going to talk about over history mm. what's happened after a bad year and how bad have they got and then what's happened off the back of it. Yep. Because the thing about a bad year, you don't know when you're at the bottom. What should I be doing? Should I be sitting on my hands, wait another three months? Yeah. Mike, I've got my deposit, but you know what? I'm just going to wait a little bit more for people to feel the pain. Yeah. So we're going to talk about what has happened historically and with the share market being down 15 odd percent year to date, property market down a similar sort of number. Should you be waiting longer or based off history, should you be getting on with the show? Yeah, I just want to really quickly point out just as a tagline, it never is the bottom of the market. It was the bottom of the market. You have no idea when it is the bottom of the market. Yeah. Just FYI. And since we're probably going to be getting quite aggressive on this one as well, Very also want to point out <laughs> this is not financial advice. You can't be going on and making decisions based off what we're talking about. If you want to have a chat one to one, let us know. Go talk to your local advisor, yeah, mortgage broker, whatever it might be. For this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's because it's it's so freaking important, yeah. and so many people get this wrong. Yeah. So make sure to stay tuned. So if we jump straight into it, stock market, worst first six months of the year mm. since the 1970s. Mike, that's 50 bloody years ago. It's yeah. been a really long time since we've had a first six months like this. The second largest crypto exchange has filed for bankruptcy. Yeah. I mean, crypto exchange, scam exchange, I don't know. You call it what you yeah. want. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we've had COVID, um, we've got the war happening in, in Russia, got the supply chain issues, inflation, interest, interest rates. rates. What Whoa. have they done, Mike? Doubled in the last 12 months. <laughs> um, so there's lots of bad things and it doesn't feel like it's going to get better anytime soon. No. Um, so what we're going to do is run through the biggest crashes in history and kind of what were the kind of media, the taglines, and then we're going to finish it up by talking about what's happened in history after the bottom of the market. So first, we're going to bring up a, a graph. And Mike, do you want to talk us through this 100 years of the stock market? What are some of the main points we're highlighting here? Yeah, cool. So we've got some headlines here. We've got, you know, the 1929 stock market crash and then the Great Depression, which funny, my gran actually lived through that. 96 years old she was. Uh, the oil crisis in 73. We've got Black Monday. We've got the big old dot-com crash in 2000. You know, I wonder if the... Uh, Dot com crash is anybody going to have like a weird parallel to the the crypto crash, you know? Um, and then the 2008 credit crisis, we all remember that one. And then the 2020 COVID crash. One big thing, just leaving this graph up for a second, I want to talk about. These were, I mean, some were worse than others. Mm. These were really tough times where people lost a lot of wealth. Yeah. A lot of people lost their jobs. But if we look over it over an extended period of times. Those drops, which were very, like we're talking 30, 40% drops in some points in terms of the share market, that Great Depression hung along for a very long time. Mm. But if we look at it over a long enough period of time, you can't, re I mean, you can see some kind of bumps up and down, but the recoveries and what's happens off the back of it, it just shows that short-term planning, you will feel the pain and the financial outcomes will hurt a lot. But if you stick with a long-term plan, you plan for the long-term, you will be fine. Yeah. So should we jump into these headlines, Mike? Let's do it. A trip down memory lane, if you will. Yeah. So if we look at the first one, uh, we've got, you know, the Great Depression. And I will say, does anything look familiar here? Doom and gloom sells newspapers. It gets the clicks. Not in this day. Uh, but, you know, it is that is what the... Uh, that is what garners the most interest from people, right? It is easy to sell doom and gloom. Uh, if you look at this, it probably looks no different to a, a you know 
Daily Mail headline on the on uh, their website today. Yeah. Um, so here we've got the uh, you know Wall Street is in panic, stocks crash, billions lost. Uh, we've also got an attempt made to kill Italy's crown prince. So much like we we're talking about before, with there's Geo always political. a war, there's always something. Uh, you know uh, that is still true today, like it was uh, a number of years ago as well. Also a little bit of reference to Hollywood as well. Very very similar. Yeah. I would say about um, the Great Depression. Um, it was great in terms of how long it went for. Out of all of these um, kind of market drops, this one dragged on for a very yeah. long period of time. You've got wars around this point that mm. very substantial, people living off food stamps for a long period mm. of time, a very high level of unemployment. There was a long, lot of pain for a really, really long period of time. Yeah. Let's move on to the next one. So we've got the dot-com bubble. Uh, Mike made the comparisons with crypto, which are 100% there, where there's this new technology that's come out in the world. Mm. It was called the internet. Yeah, the where, World Wide Web. The World Wide Web. You didn't have to shake your hand on the 18th hole after you'd made a putt to lock in a deal. No. You were doing everything through the interweb. Jumped on Netscape Navigator. Yeah. And what happened was back back in like the late 90s is everybody had a business idea mm. and there was money being thrown at these businesses because they were the future. Yep. These guys are going to be worth billions and billions of dollars. And what happened? None of the, oh, well, no, I shouldn't say none. A lot of these businesses had no revenues. They were pre-revenue. They had, yep. they were just getting money thrown at them. Some of them have done pretty well, you know, like an Amazon's done a, done a pretty good job. Um, but a big part of this is that there was just money being thrown at businesses with no proof behind it. That kind of dot-com era, those markets boomed, but there was no substance behind it. Yeah. And I guess it's, uh, you know, really, some of them are really easy comparisons to pull to, you know, the crypto world at the moment, although that arguably um, has a lot more mismanagement and sort of scams in the headline than just a straight dot-com bubble. But, you know, you know, these were some of these companies were actually uh, really uh, fundamentally quite good companies, but, you know, it just... Uh, they just didn't last the test of time, right? Like if I think about companies around that time, let's say um, from the mobile phone industry, you know, at the start of the mobile phone uh, boom, you would have looked at like Nokia, Alcatel and gone like, well, how are you ever going to disrupt these players? If you look at Apple at the same time, a very small company with a very low stock price. So just very hard to pick who's going to be the winner over the long term. Yeah. And if we look at this article, the year dot com turned into dot bomb. Yeah. Um, we've got the kind of rise and fall of what's happened with the share market, people panicking, feeling scared, going, oh, I've made a horrible investment. I've done a really bad thing. Mm. Um, one thing I would say, people who felt particular pain is those who didn't have diversification yeah. and was very heavily into those you know, startup tech companies. Yeah. Uh, if we fast forward a few years, we're going to get to the 2008 financial crisis. Um, so this one was all around... Uh, Banks and funds being over leveraged and have uh, potentially having uh, investments that were rated AAA grade, but actually weren't so AAA underneath uh, the hood once you took a look. Um, so, you know, uh, most people remember this one. Uh, you know, we had a huge drop in the value of property around the world. Um, and that sort of resulted in, uh, you know, so global shocks in the financial market, a lot of uh, very large uh, hedge funds and banks going under, uh, which then causes a liquidity crunch, which means that small businesses then can't get um, capital to run their business or make investment. So you have an entire slowdown of the global economy. Yeah. So that was a very much a systematic issue mm. where what people were selling, what people were doing on Wall Street was very, very dodgy. Very shady. Um, not not good at all. It actually was a big catalyst for regulation being heavily yeah. introduced. I will point out pretty much nobody went to prison for what happened then, which is absolutely horrendous. Yeah. Um, but uh, that, I mean, some markets around the world, like other factors as well, but like the Irish um, property market, never recovered. Other factors in there as well, we pretty much hate landlords in um, Ireland. Yeah. But um it took a long time in terms of a lot of people lost a lot of jobs, businesses went belly up, property market, share market. Yeah. Took a long time. Yeah, bankers missed out on their bonuses for like 18 months, which <laughs> is crazy. Yeah. And you can be really uh, – I think the probably important point to point out here is, you know, there was – 
fundamental systematic change throughout the industry and you've got to say that now actually none of those uh sort of shady uh processes are going on anymore and it is all squeaky clean no one went to jail so don't even worry yeah about it. so nobody's got a mustache everyone's everyone's clean <laughs> uh, the the other thing to remember during all of these times as well right is so the internet's coming about and there's more access to information but financial literacy back then like getting, you know, there was no shares, there was no access to information, a lot of yeah. those sort of things would have been even more terrifying because, I mean, what's happened this year, a lot, of, like not everyone, but quite a few people know that, that they should hold, they shouldn't sell their investments. Mm -hmm. And that information wasn't available. So it's pretty scary. Yeah. So there are some major headlines uh, throughout history um, of doom, gloom, the world falling off the edge of a cliff, uh, all your finances disappearing, uh, bankers have stolen all the money and they're not going to give it back. But the important point, what should you be doing when this happens? So we've got a couple of different graphs. We'll bring the first one up, which is the returns of the S&P 500 over... 70 odd years and showing what is what has happened so despite these markets and these periods of absolute kind of chaos and uncertainty the s p 500 top 500 companies in the us has still done an average return of 10.9 percent per annum so while there was some tough times there was lots of great times i think it was like 40 out of the 50 years still netted a positive return there was only like the times we are talking about is like the three or four times when there's been a negative 20 percent return or more yeah so out of 50 years has happened three or four times and i think there was 18 years where the return was more than 20 percent on the s p 500 yeah so mike what do you what, what are the lessons there in terms of those stats and those averages yeah look so i guess uh, a really important uh, key takeaway from there is like it is always going to happen it's always going to fall off the end of the cliff uh the edge of the world and your stocks are going to go down it is about being in uh, the game for the long run yeah right uh you just need to hold on when the drop happens uh and we'll get to this in a little bit but maybe be a little bit more aggressive if you can afford it um because the market trend on average over the long run is in a positive direction so let's look at another graph so we've got it will bring it up right now uh the returns after the market declines 10 percent, 20 percent, and 30 percent mm. so in when it drops 10 percent, what happens after it drops 10 percent? so what happens over the next period of time so after one year it goes up on average about 12 and a half percent over three years this is the cumulative return not a per annum return 34 percent. so that's around that sort of 10 percent per annum yep. and over five years the cumulative return is 68 percent mike if there's a 20% drop in the market, what hap what's happened? Yeah, so you're looking 22% after one year, 41% after three years, and then 71% uh, on that five-year cumulative average. And the 30% drop is, I mean, things have gone very wrong mm. in this situation, depression, global financial crisis, those type of events we're talking about. Yeah. The one year after it happens is the biggest jump of them all. So the 23 odd percent jump in returns, we actually saw this in mid-November, very similar sort of number where the share market jumped about 5% in one day. Why did it jump? Because inflation was 7% or around that sort of number. That sounds bad they plan for worse. So the share market's thinking they've got all the information. When new information yep. comes in, it, it plans out. So 23% jump 12 months after the bottom of the 30%. Over a three-year period, the cumulative return is 16%. Over the five years, it's still 50%. Yeah. So again, you can see here the general trend, right? And of course, over five years, the return is going to be bigger. But what we're trying to illustrate here is that actually – if you are being, you know, perhaps a little bit more aggressive, holding on, trying to enter the market as um, uh, if you can, you are going to see uh, some decent returns after the drop. The other really important point to point out here is so in 2013, um, a growth spurt of 1.2 new millionaires took the total count worldwide to a record 13.8 million households where there was millionaires. There are now over 50 50% more millionaires than there were in the dark days of 2008. So more millionaires are made in times of uncertainty. Unfortunately, a, another side effect there is the gap between the rich and the war, and, and the poor does widen each, each yeah. time something like this happens. Um, but this is where the opportunities are. It's not at the end of a big uh, kind of bull market where everybody's trying to get the end. Yeah. It's when people are scared and not sure what they can do 
is relevant to your situation. It's not everybody should be kind of, you know, going all out and take being very aggressive. But if you are in a position to be um, investing into the share market, um, buying an investment mm. property, looking at those sort of avenues to grow your wealth, there are huge opportunities. Yeah, and we've uh, on our side of the uh, business kind of adjusted the um, how aggressive we are with our advice with some of our customers. Those who are in a position to be a bit more aggressive now, we are trying to get them to take a bit more action. Mm. Everybody wanted a house an investment property, 10 investment properties at the peak of the housing market. Very few people want to be that aggressive now. It was not the time to be aggressive at the peak of the housing market. Now is the time to be aggressive. Um, you know, and I know you're going to call me out of touch a little bit here, James, but, um, you know, we, uh, in my own personal situation, you know, uh, there was this uh, house worth $4 million uh, just off Ponsonby Road. They wanted just over $2 million for it. I was prepared to move heaven and hell to, to, to get that house. I got beaten, so I didn't actually get the house. But, you know, I was uh, putting unconditional offers. Uh, we were going to have to short fire sale my own home uh, and sell it before Christmas. That was like four weeks or something like that super aggressive to try and get that property because they had to sell. It was at a massive discount for the market. So, you know, while that is not uh, the advice I would usually give anyone else, um, and I'm probably a little bit more uh, risk tolerant because I work in the industry and I was going to be doing nothing for the next three years, right? Like I was just going to be living in the house that I own. However, if we had got that house and sat on that house for five years, chances are we would have made a phenomenal capital gain off the back of it. The other point, there as well with that particular house which way to make us sound completely <laughs> cut off from the rest um is that it was haunted so during <laughs> halloween <laughs> like nice little passive income put some go you don't even have to put the ghosts ghosts come with the house yeah, yeah, um, yeah you can put you know some spiders out front i think they came with the house as well a little bit of passive income to pay that additional debt um so the story is there is always as long as you live going to be periods of uncertainty there is going to be a pandemic a financial crisis unfortunately a war there is going to be bad things happening in the world but if you can remove because money is so much about just human psychology if you can remove kind of the emotional piece of ah oh, like my neighbor's bob's telling me to put gold under my mattress and all that kind of that stuff if you can think about what is the right thing for your situation your tolerance for yep. risk there is huge opportunities right now once again one last time this is not personalized financial advice but just make sure you are thinking long term not short term yep. thank you very much for joining us please make sure to subscribe give us a review we'll catch you next week one last thing before we sign off this is probably going to be i'd say one of our last you know i don't know uh podcasts to the end of the year uh, it's going to be Christmas. We'll be taking a little bit of a break. However, James has a baby on the way. The whole team, very excited for you and Hannah. We know you'll be amazing parents. Good on you, mate. Thanks. Actually, before we go, Ravi, pick up the, bring up the picture of uh, Hannah, me, and Mike touching the baby's stomach. Uh, <laughs> we don't exactly know when we're going to come back because I'm a little bit terrified about the whole, I'm excited, but also don't know when I'll get sleep again. So we're not sure exactly when we're going to come back, how long of a break. It might be before the baby comes. It might be after. If it is after the very next episode, I'll do the baby on my lap for the intro. So make sure <laughs> to check that out. Everyone have a great break and we'll uh, catch you most likely in the new year. Cheers. Cheers.